So everybody keeps asking me, to, how did I do my car? So today I'm gonna to go ahead and give you guys a brief walkthrough on where we ran everything, how we hooked it all up, and hopefully help you out with your install on your Model 3. So starting up in the front, this is where I put my air management. My car is a rear wheel drive, so I don't have a front drive unit up here, so I tucked everything up in here. And if you wanna see more about this, check out our E-Level Plus upgrade video, which should be linked right here. So when it came time to run the lines, um, since my air management's up here, or even if you go up in the front area, you can bring the airlines down, go behind these plastic covers. So after you run your airlines along the back, there's a nice channel that goes all the way down to the rear of the car. Um, what I did is I ran my rear airline and the height sensors uh, harness down there. I started out from that end and fished a piece of airline through first, up here, wrapped it on, and then pulled it all the way down to the other side. It's really easy to run it and it's fully protected underneath the rocker and it's in between the metal case of the battery and the bottom side of the car. So from there, it's gonna come out over here which you can see where the lines came out, ran up, and then I run them over to my rear airbags, which are up there. And then the height sensor, see it right there. Now I did make up these little brackets that will go through existing holes in the chassis. You do have to drill one of them out. It's kind of like a square hole, you make it round. Then that little bracket will bolt on there. And then that tab right there for the height sensor is a factory tab hole on the control arm. And then for the front suspension, here's the strut. Um, I do run the CVT, so I do have the remote drain over here. And then for my height sensor, we made up these mounts where we can go in with this existing hole there and we add a bolt behind it to secure it. And the leakage goes up to the upper control arm factory tab. Um, we do offer these brackets for our customers that are buying our struts. Um, we have designed the two units to work well together. And in case anybody's asking, or anybody is struggling with trying to find the positioning for these, um, the height of the bag. So from the bottom of the bag to the bottom side of the sway bar tab, you can see it there, it's at four and a half inches. And then from the bottom side of the bag to the bottom side of the jam nut, we're at five and five eighths of an inch. Um, this is set up to run a 245, 35, 20, and it does lay all the way down on the inner fender wells. My sway bar location is kind of the same as a factory back at about a 45 degree angle. Um, usually I eyeball that down to the corner of the fork and I'll put it about in line with the ball joints on either end. Um, height sensor wise, this, this bag does have air in it. So my height sensors, I have a little bit of room coming down before the stop and then when fully compressed, I have a little bit of room above it before the stop. Um, nice thing with the AccuAir sensors is that they're not so picky to where you have to get every last bit of travel. With this right here, we don't ever have to worry about breaking the sensors short of removing the strut. And it does give us some adjustability where if we want to lengthen or shorten the strut in order to fine tune our heights if we have different tire size or if we don't want to go as low. Um, we do have the range inside there, but of course you do want to cycle it to make sure you're not going to go too far with it. Uh, for the top, just the upper strut mount goes into where the factory unit went. Um, to remove it, you do need to pull this down, or if you make a special socket to where you can remove the three nuts from the upper strut mount, you don't have to remove this top mount. One thing to keep in mind is if you do remove this top mount, you are gonna wanna have the vehicle realigned because this is what the upper control arms bolt up to. And that's what's gonna set your camber, caster, um, all based off of this upper mount. Now you can bang around a little bit to try to align it, but unfortunately there's not much adjustment in this vehicle. So with the front pan removed, Here's those three holes we were talking about. Um, if you don't have a socket to go in there, you're just gonna remove these four bolts. These two, the one over there, and then there's one tucked up way up underneath there. Uh, pull those out and then you can move it over and take the nuts out through the center hole. For the adjustable damping, we'll do a separate video on that because that's a whole nother thing on where you should set your damping to. The vehicle does have a regular 12 volt battery. It's located up here in the front. Um, I did run my CVT power and ground leads directly onto the battery and then I ran the cables straight down to drop into my management. If you're an all-wheel drive, you're gonna be putting it up here. So same thing, you can run it into that. And then for the way from the front area into the cabin area, 
right back there, there's a big boot that you can easily run the touchpad cable and the ignition cable through in order to get inside the car. Hopefully you guys can see where that piece of um, split loom goes into the side of that rubber boot. That's where I rub my USB cable and my um, ignition cable into the vehicle. And for the height sensor cabling, for whenever we do the E-level system for the rear wheel drive, we'll go ahead and shorten up the front harnesses because obviously with being mounted up in the front area, you don't need such a long harness to go all the way out to the front end of your car where your ECU is usually in the back. So I ran it um, up through here and then you can come out through this window and it'll put it right into where the sensors go. And then same thing over on this side. There's a nice little window and you can run all the cabling through the existing tracks in the vehicle. Now one other thing that's worth noting is that you are able to reach in there with your fingers like that and be able to adjust the damping and without removing the whole frunk. Um, it does get a little tricky but thankfully you can just kind of put in there and turn it and you feel the clicks as you go up. Just remember, go little by little. There, each click does make a noticeable difference. And then afterwards, you can just snap the panel back on the top. Now everybody keeps asking me about my rear fitment. Um, on this one, as you can see, it barely clears as it goes down. I mean, it cambers in a lot more. And these are a um, 11 inch wide by a 285.30 rear tire. Hope you found that information helpful. If you do, please like, comment down below if you have any questions or anything we can help with and subscribe to see more. See you soon.